Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Crocus City Expo Center. Now I've been here lots of times before and today they've got an auto tuning show. So I thought we'd go and check it out. The one thing that's important about this video is I'm not a car nut or a car boffin. So I'm gonna do my best <laughs> to show you some pretty cool cars and maybe talk about them if I know a little bit about any particular model. But otherwise, enjoy the show. I know I'm at the right place because I can see a lot of cars through the window right ahead of me here. And here we are, Moscow Auto Tuning Show 2023. Now I just noticed here they've got Drift Expo. I don't think there's any cars going to be drifting, but maybe they're showing some and demonstrating them. So hopefully you can check some out. Here we are everybody inside the auto show. It's very different when you come to the convention center and they've got different events going on and the different setups they use. I think with car expos or show and shine expos, they don't need to do too much other than bring the cars in and park them up and show them off. Let's go have a look at some fun cars, shall we? I like their warning sign, it's really interesting. We encourage you to take photos, but don't touch the cars and don't lean on the cars, but definitely take photos and videos of them. I don't know too much about drifting as an event. I know it's very dangerous if you do it on the normal roads and you really want to do it on closed roads. The one thing I understand with drift cars, particularly for the front wheels, is they're angled inwards and maybe this is not an exact example of it but they've got them uh, angled so that when you turn the wheel extremely left or right it gives a better turning circle and check this BMW out and they've got a hole in the bonnet right here and the other thing that's synonymous with drift cars is they've got the very big handbrake or exaggerated handbrake see if we can see it on a different model. Have a look at this one without the bonnet on it. How cool is it? I wonder if they drive it without the bonnet on. That's pretty neat. Or maybe they just want to show you the engine and all the different pipes. That's very interesting. Actually, you can see here, I think it's called camber, is the uh, description when you see the wheels turned inwards like this. From what I understand, they've got different events held yesterday and today, and they've got trophies that will be given out to the best models of cars in different categories. So this is all of the different drift cars and all the different modifications that they make to them to make them drift. Have a look again at how wide these front wheels are. I'm fairly sure in most countries it's not legal to have them that wide so let me know if that's correct or not there really is some different examples of the models of cars and this is a Toyota Mark II pretty sure they might have took the name of the model off to maybe not let everybody know what model it actually is and have a look at this Volga here now where I live in Moscow region there's an original model of this parked about two minutes from my house and there's an older gentleman that's working on it almost every day that I walk past it and he literally is there morning and night every day looking after it and caring for it and you know really keeping the car to its original look and then you come to one like this where they've done everything with it barring keeping the wheels on there and yeah, it's really fun. A lot of the cars have the Instagram names. I think perhaps some of these different drivers are quite well known in this industry. Wow, how cool inside. He doesn't have a uh, dials and dashboard. It's a Samsung tablet right there. Can you see that? This car's got a sticker on the windscreen saying Darth Vader. And I think maybe because it's in all black, but then it's got a mixture of pink and red color on it. And that's pretty cool. 
Yeah, how nice is that? Oh, look, the lights come on. Whoa, especially. Thank you, Darth Vader. That's so nice of you to do that. This is a nice car. It's got LED inside as well. True Mike is the name on the side window there. This yellow car is very nice. And it's got the, it's a Pokemon theme to it, I think. Ivan Drift. He's even got a YouTube channel. A drifting YouTube channel. How cool is that? And then have a look what he's using as the handle to keep the bonnet up. It's actually a gun. Wow. Very cool. I'm not sure how official their logo is on this car. It's got the Moscow Transport logo, the red circles right there. And I wonder how official it is with that sticker. <laughs> it's super cool. I like all these different models and their home fix in case the bumper comes off. They've just got a rubber band holding it on. Maybe it's removable for different uh, roads that they drive on. There's another BMW drift car here. This has actually got the windows removed so you can actually see the interior and then you can see the very big metal shifter there. That's an air brake rather than having a traditional handbrake and then you pull that up and basically the car should slide in all sorts of directions not too much in the way of comforts for the passenger and then there's a digital clock there as the speedometer I wonder if this is the take on Red Bull the drink brand it's got a sticker on the side saying pink pig now it's an incredibly <laughs> bright pink that they painted it and I think that's the whole point with a lot of these cars right is to really kind of make them stand out from the next model and make them very obvious looking and what does everybody think of the pink pig do you like how they've adapted from the energy drink to their own brand my only fear with coming to this event is not knowing too much about the different models of cars and also they've always got very loud music playing and that's a little bit later on on the other side of the building so hopefully it won't interfere too much with me making the videos if you do follow my channel and you've watched some recent videos I went to a Lada dealership and they have some of the models here on show and in different conditions of course some of them have been restored back to the original look of the car and then some of them have been modified. There's a very big culture in Russia, particularly among younger people and people in say their 20s until about 30s, that they want to get a larder of some kind, maybe something that their father drove or their grandfather drove, and they want to restore it and maybe soup it up a little bit and enjoy driving an absolute classic Russian vehicle in Moscow or in other regions of Russia. Of course, these cars are everywhere. The one thing that makes them very popular is how easy it is to get parts for them. And a lot of the models and the newer models or later models have a lot of standard parts of them, particularly for the engine. So it's very easy to go to any uh, parts shop or even to some of the dealerships and get the replacement parts exactly what they had from 20, 30, 40 years ago. So it's really cool to see some of them here. I wanted to show this station wagon that was right at the beginning of the line of them because it's absolutely beautiful and original condition. And interestingly, they've got the uh, poster or magazine pages from the original model of car. And this thing is absolutely mint when you walk around it. Now in this darker room, it probably doesn't do it as much justice, but it's very, very nice. Now, someone needs to let me know, have they had a car before with windscreen wipers on the headlights? They are very cool. If you recognize any of these cars, please let me know in the comments, of course, 
I'm not very knowledgeable about every model of car that exists. I think a lot of people even call me out when I say Hyundai wrong and how I mispronounce it, let alone seeing the Lada models. The more I walk around and see all of these Lada and Jiguli cars, the more I like them. Do I like them modified? Oh, maybe it's 50-50. I definitely like to see the classic models restored. And you can see here on the left and right, all the different restorations. And this one's been lowered just a little bit. I'm not too sure how they go over the speed bumps with it like that. But, you know, the look of this classic car right here. Uh, well, look at how nice this is. Wow. You know, they're very simple models. You know, the interior of them, the dashboard. You know, there's nothing complicated about them. It's almost when they do modifications, they add so many extra features. And then if there's a few people that are a little bit underage, they can do some drift racing. Right here, they've set up a track. And then all of these uh, remote control cars are going around. This is very cool. Ah. And the young kids there stopping to look at them. And then all of these guys here I wonder where their wives and girlfriends are right now. I really do hope you're enjoying this walk around at this Auto Tuning Expo. It's super interesting for me to see all these cars. They don't have too many of these expos where they've got the classic cars and the older cars. A lot of the different motor expos I go to is concentrating on new models and new companies that are coming to Russia. And then to see the old ones like this and you know the different modifications that they make and changes it's very cool now i do sound like i'm repeating myself a lot i'm sorry if that's the case but walking around and checking them out you know this is the thing it's, it kind of piques your interest in these classic cars as the music gets just that little bit louder and a little bit later in the afternoon, it's a little bit harder to talk over the huge speakers they've got way off in the distance. They've got a big stage set up and they're doing different events. But these cars right here are all different BMWs and these are very, very interesting. For the fact the license plates on them are from Lithuania. I think that's what LT means. So perhaps these are parallel imported from Lithuania into Russia. And these are all of the latest models of BMWs. This one actually even has the Swiss flag on it right there. How mad is that? And these are some very nice models of BMW. I'm not too sure where this number plate comes from. I'm fairly sure not, it's not a standard Russian number plate. But this is very nice. Now, I'm gonna have to whisper because probably the guy that runs this place is nearby, but I'm really a Porsche fan, personally. If my lotto numbers ever come up, I'd love to own a Porsche, or even just go for a drive in a Porsche, sit in one drive one down the highway and really enjoy one but how nice are some of these different BMWs if you recognize the models let me know in the comments I think for many people who are even aren't car fans probably recognize this model now yeah, they've got the do not sit or lean on the car sign right in front of it I think everybody wants to get inside the very famous DeLorean and there's one here in Russia have a look at those doors they're so iconic wow it's not quite the same interior as in the movie it's the absolute original DeLorean fit out somebody just asked the guy is it a copy 
And the guy's like, no, it's absolutely original. And I wonder how many of these exist in Russia. It's got the local number plates on right there. So it's definitely street legal. But there's nowhere to put the fuel in there like in the movie. And how nice does it look? There's also quite a lot of different rally cars on display here, which take part in the Russian Rally Championships. I think this is a Mitsubishi Evo, perhaps. My limited car knowledge. I'm fairly sure that's what that one is. And then there's another model over here. Doesn't have on the back which one it is. But these are definitely rally modified cars. They're not designed for on the road. This is a Subaru. I wonder if it's a Subaru Impreza. I'm not too sure of the other models they make beyond that one. As you're watching this, I really want to apologize for the background noise. They've got a stage set up and they've got a dancing competition and it's so loud that I can't talk at a normal volume over the speakers when they're playing. So I'm sorry about that. Please enjoy. But I'm showing you all the same though. Do we have any French car fans watching? There's a Renault Clio here. And this looks like a rally car as well. It's got the seats in there, the roll cage. It's pretty much a stock car. Then they've just modified a lot of the interior for rally driving. I'm not sure what model of Subaru this is. There is some letters there but I can't quite make it out. But it's a very nice model. Not sure if I'm a fan of the pink stickers on the side. Maybe it's all about the branding. And this is pretty much the standard model of car. It hasn't been changed the interior at all. They've just put the livery on the side. So I'm pretty sure this, although it looks like a rally car, it's a stock car that you can drive on the streets. This is another model of car where they've removed the badges. So I'm not sure what this standard car was. But I think on this one now, you can see the angle of the tires that they've got on it here. They're almost leaning the car inwards. So this is definitely set up for rally driving or for drifting. Wow, this all black color as well. Those wheels are just so wide on the back, how much they stick out. I think I'm just too normal and too boring with my car uh, knowledge that when I see these, I, I think to a point that they've been ruined, you know, because it's not the car that was driven out of the showroom, but then you know, there's an element of them just looking absolutely crazy cool. And I kind of want one. I'm just not sure would I be able to handle driving this with the wheels like it is. I mean, how hard would that be to drive? This is more my style. Mercedes hatchback. I'm not sure I'd want the spoiler on it. I wonder if a spoiler spoils the car. And of course it's meant to change the downforce and the wind, but sometimes they look a little bit too much on the models, but I like this color of gray. This is very nice. I'm not sure about the lowered suspension. You need to let me know in the comments, everybody. Do you like the look of these? Do you like this lowered look or is it a little bit too much? Now I'm getting to the cars that I really don't know the names of or the models of. I'm not even sure what the badge is on this one. Uh, I like this blue with the racing stripe down the middle though. How big is that bonnet and front end on it? Or oh, perhaps it's a Dodge Viper. There we go. <laughs> it's written on the side. Just. And, uh, that's a nice car. Have a look at this car now. I'm not sure of the name of this one either. It's got this matte black finish to it. And I'm pretty sure this is very heavily modified from the original model of car. 
and it's very cool. The one thing that I find very interesting, if this is a family car, you can barely get your shopping in the back. There's not even enough room there for about two carrier bags of shopping. I mean, it's a cool car. I definitely agree with that, but it's got to be practical as well, right? And it looks like we get dinner and a movie when we look at this car. These are some of the girls that were up on stage a little bit earlier. And there was that many people I couldn't even get close to see this. But we get a little bit of a bonus performance. It must be the trend in Russia to have your bonnet latch be some kind of a machine gun. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see blending in. This car's also got its guard dog right here. And I'm pretty sure it must have won a few awards at some point. But this guard dog is looking after this car very well. The black finish on this Mercedes is just cool. It's this absolute matte black finish. And I wonder if this is a spray coating that they put on top. I don't think it's a wrapping, but it's pretty interesting. And the inside's been custom finished with the seats and the padding. Wow, that's very cool. There really is a lot of cars to cover in this expo. I don't think I'll be able to show all of them as I'm walking around. Not too sure if this is even drivable. It's, looks like a jet engine from an aircraft, maybe. That's pretty interesting. I've got a whole series of them in the middle here, which look like sort of show cars. I'm not sure if they're for sale or not, but there's some pretty interesting models. It's probably hard to make out how big this Mercedes G-Wagon is. But it's got incredibly big wheels. And it's been very, very modified. Wow. So we've got the soft top roof at the back there. Check that out. And this is the more normal looking version of it. Even this thing is pretty impressive, right here. I mean, these are very nice. I mean, for me, they're just big gas guzzlers and they would use so much fuel. Of course, in Russia, it's cheaper for petrol than anywhere else, you know, in the, in the world to an extent. They're barring a lot of, you know, big oil producing countries. Now, this is meant to be the Cybertruck. Now, I actually saw this last year when I came to an event and it's meant to look like the Cybertruck and of course, I don't think they've actually been released yet or they're you know, still in production or in building. But this is the Russian version of it. What do you think? This middle part of the expo has different car dealerships and these are current models that are for sale in Russia right now. Now a lot of these are obviously imported cars. There's a Tesla right there. There's a BMW just off in the background. There's a couple of very big Dodge Rams right here. You do actually see these on the road in Moscow. You know, you won't see them all the time, but they do exist. And have a look at this Tesla. And all I know about the Tesla is the big screen on the inside of the car there. I've never been inside one to see them up close. And then all the models on this lane here are all from a car dealership in Moscow, which is importing the cars to Russia. And they're selling them as current 2023, 2024 models. I think I'm slowly losing my voice from trying to talk over the music and the speakers there's some more custom cars here there's a volkswagen there's a couple of pretty impressive mercedes here as well and they really kit these out to the end that's possible looking at them even on the back here the trim on the wheels is carbon fiber that's pretty impressive. I mean, how much is just that piece alone, let alone the rest of the vehicle? 
Wow. Very nice. I think I'd have trouble parking this though. How would I find a parking spot? I'd be worried he's going to park next to me. And there's always that thought. This is the Mercedes 800. I think that's what it says right there. What do you think? Would you like a Mercedes 800? As I walk around a little bit more, the cars just get more impressive. Lamborghini right here. Is this maybe the Aventador? I do watch a couple of car YouTube channels, but I don't remember all the different models that we're looking at, but this one has the also the matte black finish. I would have to think it avoids fingerprints. That's probably the best way I can look at it. And over here, this Porsche 911 Turbo. Maybe it's 928. Now, it's very interesting, the livery on this one is actually a tobacco brand. And I wonder how many people in Russia may be recognizing this as a tobacco brand. Now, you can't show these uh, liveries on cars. I watched a car race on TV last weekend and they were showing some old footage and they had to blur out the uh, branding on the side of the car because back in the day, tobacco manufacturers were big on uh, motorsport and obviously there's a certain demographic of people that follow car racing this is a beautiful car you can actually buy all of these models this is the dealership right here and the couple of salespeople involved with it and i'm fairly sure you can go up to them and ask for a price and they can let you know how much they would go for Oh, very nice. I'm not sure that my wife would really approve of the logos and the badges that are on the Porsche that I like here. I'm very much a more classic colors kind of guy. And then have a look at this Lamborghini. Look at the colors on that. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing right there, but there's a Porsche badge crossed out. So I wonder if the Lamborghini owner of this car is always getting questioned about what model it is. So he's put the two different stickers on it. Can you imagine there's a Lamborghini Aventador right here? But over here, there's a slight distraction by the ladies up on stage having a dance off. And what's more interesting is the amount of ladies watching on versus just the men. I think the ladies are kind of one eye open, one eye closed. And then there's this beautiful yellow Lamborghini and there's virtually nobody looking at it. It's, what would you rather have? The car or the girls? If you're wondering how much you can modify a Dodge Ram, I think this is a good example of it. And Fat Tony, and my dad's name's Tony, but we don't call him that. And this is pretty impressive, all the different modifications it's made. I'd struggle to get in the car. It's, it's about a meter off the ground just to get inside. Very nice model. It's interesting that there is so many imported cars at this event. Of course, we saw quite a lot of the Ladas and the different drift cars. Alfa Romeo right here. Take me to Mars is what it says on the back sticker. It's got that two-tone paint finish on it that's no matter what angle you look at it it's you know kind of messes with your head a little because you're not sure what color it really is. It's a very beautiful car. There's another Tesla right here. This one's got the windows down. It's got some pretty neat modifications inside as well. The different trim pieces. And just that one screen right there, which is synonymous with Tesla. And this matte black finish. I always find it strange when these cars don't have handles. I always know, don't know what to touch when you're looking at them. Okay, everybody, so November 3 is my birthday. 
Anybody would like to treat me to a nice car? Carrera 4S. This is beautiful. Maybe I'll be okay with the hardtop version. I'm not so bothered about the soft top. This is something else. Not a lot of room in the back. Just you can put your cat in there. And then all the spaces in the front, of course. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Now, if anybody wants to treat me for my birthday, you're more than welcome to send me an email, send me a super chat, and this is what I'd like for... I always want to say, uh, this is what I want for Christmas, but it's really what I want for my birthday. The nicest car at the show, I think. Now, of course, I'm sure a lot of people watching have different ideas to me. Not everybody likes Porsche or German vehicles. They want American muscle and the American muscle cars here and trucks. Another Ram. Maybe these are the Ram dealers in Moscow. There's a lot of different models. Wow. It's a camo green color. There's a yellow one. Looks like Bumblebee. Anybody seen the movie? I think this is the closest color. Again, you've got a big American car and you can barely get your shopping in the back. Where are you going to put your shopping? Tell me, there's hardly any space. We also got the remote control for the speakers. Oh, you're going to get out the car, change the music, get back in. Have a look at this boot of this car. It's got the speaker system. It goes right inside. Not very practical for your shopping. I mean, let me know what you think. So I was looking around for Fat Tony. I don't see any Tonys that look fat to me, so maybe he's not even here today. But you've got some nice cars, Tony. Now again, my dad's name is Tony, so it's a bit strange saying it. I don't call him Tony, I call him Dad. But Fat Tony, that Porsche has got my name on it right there. There's another Porsche right across from the one that I just showed you. This is the Porsche 924. And have a look, he's got the limited edition number plate too that matches the car. Now, there's a lot of value in Russian number plates, especially with the numbers that are in sequence or the numbers that are matching the model of the car as well. There's actually even the owner's manual for the car when it was new right there. And those seats inside, amazing. And this has also got the roof as well that comes off. These are called the Targa roofs on a few of the models. Someone's going to have to correct me. A beautiful car. Again, the Porsche is probably the only model of car in this whole show that I'd really like for myself if I had a chance. So I did the walk around looking at these from the backside. And then they've got a sign next to the different models. The Ford Mustang Coyote. This is a beast of a car. And what's super interesting, of course, these are very well-known American cars, is Roush Racing. Right there, they're a very big supporter of motor racing in America and all around the world. This is another beautiful car. Probably a little bit too big and too fast for me, but I still got to appreciate beauty when I see it. I'm sure lots of people are going to question or ask about how are these models in Russia in 2023. The Challenger Scat Pack. I'm not sure what a Scat Pack is. Someone will have to let us know. The uh, hood of the car is very different. It's like a metal look and the rest of the car is green. I wonder what a Scat Pack is. As we look over and see Bumblebee on the other side over here. There seems to be a lot of people having a look at all these different American trucks. These are trucks, they're far beyond cars. The Ram TRX. And the top of the engine is almost the height that I'm standing next to it. <laughs> That's so tall. Have a look at the people just walking by and the car just towers over them. And have a look at some of the other luxury cars here. Audi. There's an Aston Martin here. 
and it has the English flag right on the side panel. That's a nice Aston Martin. And then Mercedes. And then have a look at this Rolls Royce. With the orange interior of all colors. I mean, beautiful car. I'm not too sure about that orange interior though. Beautiful. I think the only way I know if my wife is watching these videos is if she comments that she saw a Mini in the video because this is the car that she would like to get is a Mini, maybe not with the big tires and wide rims but maybe a more classic Mini but this is the, her favourite car that she talks about every time we see one on the road so I'll know if she's watching my YouTube channel if my wife mentions this car to me. As I head on out of the Auto Tuning Expo, I really th hope you thought it was interesting. Uh, I've almost lost my voice. I think from just trying to feel like I'm talking over this loud music that was playing. Yeah, it was kind of fun to see them doing the dancing competitions, but it doesn't make producing a video any easier with the amount of background noise so uh, at this point I hope it's come out okay and it'll be interesting is there any cars there that you liked let me know in the comments maybe you saw a model of car that I didn't mention correctly you could also let me know about that as well if you like the video give it a thumbs up I'm gonna go and have a drink go and have a sit down for a little while I feel like I was talking and talking the whole walk around of the expo the one thing with making the video is you tend to spend more time looking at the cars filming them than you do actually enjoying them yourself so if you want to see an older video on the channel you can click right here there'll be another video coming up right now if you want to join me on telegram there's a link to my telegram channel right here as i head out to the cold rainy moscow afternoon i'm off on another adventure bye everybody